Hello, I'm Anthony. Today I'm going to show you how to configure expression maps in Cubase for key switches. Now this is a quite narrow use case. Expression maps can be used for lots of different reasons. What I use them for is a matter of convenience to take the key switches that I use on my instruments out of the MIDI part. I don't want um, a D sharp minus one to get accidentally transposed up an octave when I transpose all of the notes in that MIDI part. I want them to be separate. I've got this partially configured expression map today that I'm gonna finish off configuring and show you the reasons why I've chosen some of the options that I have, how I've got it to work for me. First thing that we're gonna do is select our track and on the left-hand side in the inspector, just make sure you've got um, expression map visible and then you'll get this tab you'll just see at the expression map setup button and nothing else. If you click that button, the first time you go into this window, it's gonna be completely empty. Creating an expression map is incredibly simple. Just call it the name of the instrument that you're gonna be assigning to. So this contact instrument over here is a, a great illustration of the problem that we've got because there are two different kinds of key switches. You've got latching and non-latching key switches. I'm gonna be able to demonstrate all of that today and how we basically get an expression map working with them. So before we go any further, let's just have a really quick review of what's going on here. We've got our instrument, our cello. Every time I press a note on the cello, I'm gonna get these long ringing sustained notes. That's because this articulation called sustained finger is currently selected. If I click pizzicato, that's what pizzicato sounds like. One more example, spiccato is quite a short note, but not as short as pizzicato. And back to the full sustain. The eight articulations that you can see in this window are the ones out of a much larger list that I've chosen to implement. So this particular plugin has lots of different articulations. I've just picked this, these eight to work with today. And I've got myself into the situation where I've created an expression map that uh, contains six of them. and We've got two missing. We're going to add those in today. Now, all of these articulations are examples of latching key switches. In other words, I click the pizzicato button and from now on, every note I play on the instrument is pizzicato until I send in a new instruction. However, you can also have non-latching uh, key switches. The position option, if I engage that, got this picture of the fingerboard. If I play a D2, you can see this little white dot of representation of the, the position on the fingerboard where that note's being played. But if I click the key switch corresponding to a, an option called force open strings, it's this green key. Now you can see this little bar highlights at the bottom of the fingerboard and now a D2 is played open string. So that's a non-latching key switch because I'm having to hold the button down on my mouse in order to get this functionality. The moment I let the mouse button go, we're back to the fingered version of the same note. So I want all of that functionality. I want both latching and non-latching options uh, in my expression map. What the expression map's ultimately gonna give me is the ability to take all of the notes out of the MIDI part. They're not gonna be stored as D-sharp minus ones and D-zeros anymore. They're gonna be stored basically somewhere hidden inside Cubase. We don't care where, they're not MIDI notes. They can't be seen in any MIDI editor. Cubase is gonna grab them and hive them off somewhere secret and safe. And it's gonna translate that stuff into these mapping instructions that turn into the correct instructions that go to the, to the keyboard. You can also see on the right hand side, I've got my native instruments machine. The bottom two rows of pads on this instrument correspond to these eight buttons. So if I press the bottom right hand pad, you'll see the spizzicato articulation highlight. I'm gonna let this pad go, watch what happens. Just bounced back to sustain finger. That's all to do with this latching and non-latching thing. We'll cover all of that today. So before we go any further, let's just have a listen to this MIDI part that I've got recorded in. At the moment, the entire thing is gonna be played with the sustain articulation and no open string forcing. So we've got a couple of D2s over here. You'll see that when they get played on the fingerboard, they're played with the fingered version of those notes. There it is. A 
Okay, so I want to add some articulation to those notes to make them play with different kinds of articulations, different expressions. And I also want this particular note here to be forced to be played with the open string. So that's the brief of the day. Now here's the cool thing about expression maps. Once you've configured them, you can see them as a separate controller lane. Here's the articulations option. Let's turn that on. And here are all of my options. So this is much nicer than having those bare MIDI notes embedded as part of the MIDI parts, not really kind of distinguishable from other um, MIDI notes. Now we've separated it all out and we've got all of these dedicated controller lanes. First demonstration that I'm gonna give you, and you saw that I just selected all of the notes. Now when I choose my pencil tool in the controller lanes down below, here's my spiccato lane. If I click on any of these four notes, it's gonna create a, uh, an articulation for each one of them. So it's basically generated a separate key switch for every one of those four notes. The reason for that is that the, uh, the expression map is currently in something called attribute mode. You see all of these different slots over here. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this shortly, but they're all in attribute mode, which means every single note has its own independent command. The advantage of this mode is that if I pick this note up and move it, the key switch follows. So it's tied specifically to that note. Now, if you want the option to use both latching and non-latching key switches, this is going to be your only option. I'll show you the other method shortly, but it doesn't work with non-latching key switches. You're just gonna to have to bear that in mind. So now let's play this part again. All these notes are sustained. There's the spiccato articulation. And then as soon as it plays another note that doesn't explicitly have an articulation set for it, it's reverting back to its default state. So this D2 down here was played as a sustained note. So I suppose we, we need to deal with this elephant in the room. Let's have a talk about latching. We can't kind of put it off anymore. In the bottom left-hand corner of the expression map setup, we've got this option called latch mode. It's either on or off end of chat. Not only is it on or off, it's on or off system wide. So it doesn't matter how many expression maps you have loaded in Cubase. This remote settings option down here, all of this stuff, the latch mode operates across your entire system. So if I turned latch mode on, I wouldn't be able to have this non-latching key switch, the D0 key switch that I currently have. I'll just demonstrate how that one works at the moment. So I'm gonna play a D2. There you can see it uh, playing the fingered version. Now, if I press um, a D0, which is this pad up here, there's the open string version. Release the pad back to fingered. So that is a non-latching key switch. You can see the fingerboard highlighting and um, unhighlighting every time I press the pad. I only get that option because I've got latching disengaged. If I turn this on now, when I press the pad, the key is stuck down and I've kind of broken my system. It simply won't work properly. So having concluded that we need latching mode off, we're gonna now need to warp all of our other operations around that, that knowledge because now we've, we've got this situation where I'm pressing these pads and you can see that it's holding the sustain bowed uh, key switch down. The moment I let the pad go, we flick back to sustain finger. What this means in reality is that sustained finger is far and away the most important of the articulations. The articulation that you specify at the top of your expression map, this is the default one when you're in non-latching mode. Anything in the same group, I'll deal with groups in a moment, uh, any other pad that you press that's in that group, the moment you let it go, it's gonna return back to the, to the original default position. Now let's deal with this D2 down here. Now, the behavior for non-latching key switches is difficult. You, you basically need to behave yourself and you need to get all of your articulations absolutely right. We don't have a key switch set up for this note at the moment, so it should play uh, fingered. But look at that, every time I press a key on the keyboard, we're kind of stuck in open string mode. I can fix this problem. I can make this lock go away by explicitly specifying that these notes are sustained. Finally, I'm going to explicitly tell this D2 to play open. So what I'm basically, what I'm doing is I'm taking over control 
of these key switches from Cubase. Nothing is implicit anymore. Let's run through this MIDI part and see what happens when each of these two D2s is played. There's the open string version. There's the fingered version. So because I've explicitly issued a command, Cubase kind of figures itself out and says, oh, right, okay, I, I got a little bit confused as to whether or not I was supposed to be open or closed there. Make sure everything is absolutely explicit. Finally, we've got this little rundown at the end of the part. I'm gonna select the notes in the rundown itself, get my pencil tool, and this time I'm gonna choose sustain runs. What this basically does is it, it, it shortens the length of the note that's played. It makes it appropriate for a faster run. So let's just hear that. And you can see the articulation switching behind the scenes. So now there's the open string. See the fingered string. There it is. And then the run down. We've got all of these articulations playing with each other. Everything is perfectly happy. Right then, next issue that we need to deal with. What's this deal about groups? We've got group one and group two. Well, all the key switches that correspond to articulations in a single group are mutually exclusive. In other words, you can't have pizzicato, which is very short notes, and sustain at the same time. That they're, they're mutually exclusive. But whether or not you want to play an open string doesn't have anything to do with the kind of articulation you want. It's perfectly reasonable to play an open string pizzicato note just as an open string sustained note. So they're different categories of articulation and that's what the groups are all about. So as you can see here, I've defined my force open articulation as a group two. So let's see a demonstration of that. I'll hold spiccato down. You see this tiny little pink light in the keyboard saying that spiccato is now engaged. All the notes are short. Now I hold the force open string down as well. And there's open string being played spiccato. Now, there's a problem here. The moment I let this open string key latch go, can you see it's basically defaulted back to sustain finger. That's not great. Shouldn't have done that. If I still had the spiccato key open, then it should basically hold that group open regardless of what I do. So the, the non-latching nature of expression maps has got a couple of problems and that's one of them. This is the closest approximation I can get to making expression maps work. And it's really, really close, but it's not perfect. Get the expression map back up again. And I'm gonna create the final two expressions that we don't have yet. Got crescendo and pizzicato. And I'll use these two as an example of how to actually create these sound slots. Okay, first one is gonna be crescendo and it's on F sharp minus one, F sharp minus one. Unfortunately, you have to type the information. It would be nice if I could hit the pad, but you can't. And I'll tab across to the name, and this is Crescendo. Now the articulation column is where you specify what's going to happen. This is the instruction that would be printed out, for instance, if we were preparing score. So we do have the option to go into these various um, submenus and see if Crescendo exists. Now it doesn't, so I'm gonna create a custom articulation. Here it is, it's a raging storm outside, sorry about the noise text. I'm going to call it crescendo. I'm going to make it an attribute type. Uh, I'll deal with the other form in a, in, a, in a moment. And you can see it's defaulted to the same description. That's absolutely fine. So that now exists as an articulation in its own right. If you want to put them in group key order, just move it up to the, pro the appropriate level. We're not quite done yet. We need to create an output mapping for it. So when I press F sharp minus one, on the keypad, what do I want to happen? Well, I want it to generate a note on instruction of the same instruction. I don't care what the velocity is, 120 is fine. I think anything 64 and above is fine for a key latch. And that's it. Now, when I press this pad, you can see the key switch engaging. When I let the pad go, it doesn't. If I don't explicitly define a pad, then the expression map non-latching process won't work properly. I'm just going to press pizzicato. Here's the pad corresponding to uh, G minus one, which is the key switch. Just press the pad. As you can see, my finger is now off the pad and yet the latch is stuck because that's the default behavior of the instrument. That standard 
regular old G minus one has been passed completely unprocessed into contact. It's picked the instruction up and it's latched onto pizzicato. And now all of the notes are played pizzicato. Problem with that is that I don't have an expression map for it. I don't have a lane down here that allows me to create pizzicato instructions. And so it would be interpreted as a regular MIDI note. I need to properly define it inside expression mapping in order to get access to all of this functionality and to prevent this kind of latching behavior. So let's define it now. This is gonna be G minus one, pizzicato. This time I happen to know that pizzicato does exist as an articulation, so I might as well choose it. I don't really care because I'm not printing this stuff to score, but it's just, you know, it's convenient to use it as not. And here you can see the pizzicato articulation, then create our output mapping to G minus one, and we're done. Final thing I need to do is set this articulation to attribute. While it's in direction, I'll just leave it in direction for a moment, just to show you what direction does. Choose these spiccato notes, and I'll just get rid of all those key switches by clicking with the pencil, not, as a matter of interest, the delete key. The deletes, the, the eraser will actually remove the notes as well. We don't want that. We want to get rid of them with our pencil. So now I'm gonna create a key switch for my pizzicato instruction, which as you saw was a direction. What that means is the moment that instruction is issued, carry on doing that thing until the next key switch happens. So you can see it's basically filled in this entire lane what that means is that this note down here, the D2, is inadvertently going to be a pizzicato note. Now this sounds like great functionality, issue a command, hold it there until I issue a new command. The problem is it breaks the non-latching nature. If I turned these into direction articulations, it kind of overrides the non-latching nature so we can't use direction instructions. What I need to do instead is head back into the expression map and make sure that pizzicato is an attribute. And now when I select those notes and add the articulations, it's going to, it's going to assign a key switch to each one of those notes. The D2 will be left alone as a regular sustained note. Let's hear that. So it's a D2 played in sustained finger articulation without the open, the force open string key switch being applied. Neaten up my sound slots, put them all in a nice neat order. So this is the order of my group one sound slots, force open down at the bottom. Now I can save my expression map. And every time I load this Stradivari cello, I can load this expression map and I'm gonna get all the functionality I want. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit like if you did. Uh, thanks very much for watching. See you next time.